Hello everyone. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, certain novel mathematical modeling of a quantity of an astronomical parameter called Pranakalantra by Madhava, the famous Madhava of the Kerala school. So uh, I understand that uh, this talk will be uh, filled with some jargon, Sanskrit as well as uh, astronomical. I'll try to explain it uh, as simply as I can. Please bear with me. So uh, I, will, I will start off with a simple introduction uh, talking about Madhava, his work Lagna Prakarna in which these models appear, what is Pranakalantra and what is its use. Then I will move on to uh, the different models which were used by Madhava to determine Pranakalantra and then I will conclude with my observations. Okay. So firstly, we are talking about a text called the Lagna Prakarna. In, uh, in which everything which I am going to talk about occurs. And this is one of the works of Madhava of Sangamagrama and uh, it is an astronomical text dedicated to the determination of the Lagna. What is Lagna will just shortly come. And it consists of 139 verses and divided into 8 chapters. Uh, and it gives the exact value for Lagna. This is uh, something we have discussed in other fora. Uh, uh, unlike earlier texts which only give approximate values. Uh, this text gives the exact value for Lagna. And what exactly is Lagna? Uh, it can be translated as that which adheres, touches or intersects. And in astronomy, this is uh, usually referring to a point on the ecliptic, which is in conjunction with another circle. Okay, And so most commonly, it refers to the Udaya Lagna or the rising ecliptic point, which is the intersection of the ecliptic and the horizon. Okay. Uh, what is Pranakalantra and uh, what is its use? So I said that the Lagna Prakarna has eight chapters. Of this, the first chapter is dedicated to sort of setting the foundation, setting the base, you know. Uh, Madhava discusses various different astronomical parameters which will be used in subsequent Lagna calculations. And Pranakalantra is one such parameter. And it is a technical term which denotes the difference between the longitude and corresponding right ascension. So, uh, if we talk about uh, how, I mean, uh, you know, how this is derived, it's a compound word which is made up of three words, prana, kala and antara. And uh, prana is a measure uh, uh, along the equator, kala is a measure along the ecliptic and the antara is the difference basically. Okay, so prana is basically it's uh, somewhat close to four seconds. So if you consider that uh, the time period of the rotation of the earth is approximately uh, 84,600 seconds and uh, the 21,600 arc minutes which is the standard measure of the circle in the Indian astronomy. So uh, 84,600 by 21,600 gives approximately four seconds. So it's the time taken by uh, one arc minute of the equator to cross the prime meridian. Uh, what is its use? Uh, like I already said, it is used for the conversion of longitude to right ascension and vice versa in this particular text. In the Tantra Sangraha of Nilakantha, it is used for determining the equation of time. And mathematically, you know, if we denote longitude with lambda and right ascension with alpha, it can be simply expressed as lambda minus alpha. This quantity can be positive or negative depending on uh, which quadrant of the ecliptic uh, is it that we are talking about. And uh, generally in the Indian context, people didn't, uh, the astronomers uh, didn't consider the negative value. What they would to do was take its absolute value and apply it positively or, positively or negatively, which gives the same effect. So you can, you know, you can express Pranakalant, uh, you can, if you want, for example, to determine the right ascension, you can write it this way, lambda plus minus Pranakalantra or which is plus minus mod lambda minus alpha. So uh, with that brief introduction to Pranakalantra and the text, I will just quickly move on to the various methods of determining Pranakalantra. So before I jump into the method, let me just, you know, give you an idea of the celestial sphere. Uh, so here we have the equator. This line is the ecliptic, the red line. Uh, this is the pole of the equator and K is the pole of the ecliptic. And if you consider a point S on the ecliptic, 
gamma s will be the longitude of the point and gamma b will be the right ascension and sb will be the declination. We also know the obliquity of the ecliptic which is the you know angle between the ecliptic and the equator it is represented by epsilon and uh, uh, because this is lambda this will be 90 minus lambda and this will be 90 minus alpha and this angle will be alpha which is the measure of gamma b and this will be 90 minus alpha. So, so what we are interested in finding is difference between this and this or to put it another way knowing this how do we determine this ok. So, this is the first method it is a very simple straightforward method. Uh, I will not perhaps in the interest of time go into the verse and explain it, but uh, this is the formula which derives from the verse. Prana Kalantara is the sin inverse of Bahuguna subtracted by the sin inverse of this quantity ok. Uh, and in mathematical notation it can be written as lambda minus alpha is lambda minus, uh, here we are using the R signs uh, which is the traditional Indian way of doing it, R sin inverse of this quantity or to put it another way we are saying that sin alpha is equal to the quantity within the brackets and this can be easily seen from this diagram. So, if you consider the spherical triangle uh, again this would be something which would have been determined using planar geometry by Indian astronomers and mathematicians. Uh, I will in a subsequent method I will discuss the how they use planar geometry in greater detail because this is a simple example I will just show you how the how you can derive it from the spherical triangle. In this spherical triangle S gamma B you know lambda this angle is 90 degrees S B gamma and uh, this angle is epsilon. So, simply and this is delta. So, using the simple sine rule of uh, spherical trigonometry you will have sin, sin lambda by sin 90 is sin delta by sin epsilon. So, this gives you the relation for the declination which is that sin delta is sin lambda sin epsilon. Similarly, you can determine the value for alpha which will give you this expression ok. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if uh, you uh, the value for the al sin alpha can be derived actually from p gamma s where this is alpha and again applying sin alpha by sin lambda and this is 90 minus delta sin 90 minus delta by sin 90 minus epsilon. So, that gives you this expression this basically gives you sin alpha is sin lambda cos epsilon by cos delta. The second method uh, is again a simple method. The verse describes a formula which gives the Pranakalantara as this quantity. So, let us again remember that lambda is the longitude, delta is the declination and uh, uh, so this is how it can be derived perhaps I can use the board. So, uh, in if we consider the spherical triangle P S D ok, we have angle P is 90 minus alpha, uh, S D is 90 minus lambda, then we have P S this arc S D this is arc P S is 90 minus delta and angle D is 90 degrees. Okay, so, if we again apply the simple sin rule, we will get sin of 90 minus delta by sin 90 is equal to sin of 90 minus lambda by sin of 90 minus alpha which gives cos alpha is equal to cos lambda by cos epsilon. So, uh, so sorry cos lambda by cos delta not cos epsilon uh, yeah. So, so this is how we have got it this is the expression. So, this this expression is equivalent to cos alpha which is sin 90 minus alpha. So, sin inverse of sin 90 minus alpha gives 90 minus alpha and this is cos lambda which is uh, 
sin 90 minus lambda. So sin inverse of that is 90 minus lambda. So 90 minus alpha minus 90 minus lambda gives lambda minus alpha. This is the expression here. It is from the third method, method that things get really interesting. And uh, the genius of the astronomer and the planar geometry, the complexity of the planar geometry, they would have to dealt with this scene. So this verse gives three quantities. It uh, gives a quantity called Antyafala. Then it gives a quantity called Dujya, which is basically the radius of the diurnal circle. And then it gives the third quantity called Lipta Subheda, which is equivalent to Pranakalantra. And uh, so we will see how this value is arrived at. Uh, so consider this triangle. It is, uh, it, is the same, it is the same diagram we have seen before, but now we show the planar geometry involved in deriving these relations. Uh, here we can consider four triangles, four right angle triangles. One is OSB. This doesn't look right angle, but it is right angled at B because you know we are trying to represent a three dimensional thing on two dimensional, right, two dimensions. Then we have the right angle triangle O S prime, O S S prime. We have S B S prime and we have O S prime B. Basically we need to use these four triangles to arrive at the, uh, arrive at the relations. Uh, and uh, we have previously seen that S S prime is basically, you know, uh, in this diagram, this is the R corresponds to delta. So the chord corresponds to sine delta. And so this OS prime is cos delta. We have also seen that gamma s, the arc corresponds to lambda. So the chord SB corresponds to sine lambda and OB corresponds to cos lambda. Uh, we have seen that uh, the angle between the equator and the ecliptic is epsilon. So in this triangle, this angle is epsilon. So if, if SB is sine lambda, this is sine lambda cos epsilon. Okay, so this is the, here we show the four, four, four triangles. Uh, so sin delta cos delta, sin delta cos sin, uh, sin lambda, which is sin lambda cos epsilon, sin lambda cos lambda. And so then we come to the fourth triangle OBS prime. So now we know all the sides of this triangle. OS prime is cos delta, OB is uh, cos lambda, and SB prime is, sorry, SB prime is uh, sin lambda cos epsilon, which we have arrived from here sorry, S prime B, okay? And in this triangle, if we simply apply the, you know, hypotenuse square is equal to sum of side square, we basically get this expression. The sine lambda minus antyafala, so sine lambda minus sine lambda versa and epsilon is nothing but sine lambda cos epsilon. So this is how they seem to have derived. It shows uh, amazing visualization of 3D geometry. And, uh, uh, this antyafala is something which is very interesting. We will see more use of this in the next, next, uh, next verse. And then once we have this expression for cos delta, we can also input this, you know, substitute this antyafala into this expression. And this will give us the value for uh, the pranakalantra or lipta subheda. This can be shown with some simple uh, trigonometrical manipulation that uh, uh, this is equal to lambda minus alpha. Uh, the one interesting thing here is this value actually uh, reduces to sin, la sin lambda minus alpha, not lambda minus alpha. So what they seem to have done is uh, they have approximated this value as lambda minus alpha. So uh, clearly they knew that uh, lambda minus alpha can be, sin lambda minus alpha can be approximated to lambda minus alpha at small values or sin theta can be approximated to theta at small values. So for example, here we show a table which shows how Pranakalantra value uh, varies with longitude. So you can see that the maximum value is around 2.58, which is uh, certainly, you know, it allows this uh, approximation. This approximation is valid. This is the graph of how Pranakalantra varies with longitude. So when the maximum value is only 2.5 degrees, we can definitely approximate uh, sine lambda minus alpha as lambda minus alpha. Okay. Uh, the fourth method, things get even more interesting. Uh, this verse gives four formulae. Uh, you know, I'm a little sad that I don't have the time to go into the verses. They are beautiful by themselves. Uh, but uh, so uh, it defines two quantities called Bhujafala and Kotifala first, which are sort of a function of the Antimafala, which is the same as the Antifala seen in the previous verse. So these two values are a function of the Antifala. 
and they are equivalent to sin lambda times antiphala and cos lambda times antiphala. Okay, so you can imagine a triangle where the hypotenuse is the antiphala and the sides are sin lambda antiphala and cos lambda antiphala. Then the verse again gives a expression for the diurnal circle, the radius of the diurnal circle and an expression for the prana kalantara. And uh, initially we had no idea how the person came up with this. But there is something in this terminology, Antifala, Bhujafala and Kotifala. For those of you who are familiar with the epicycle model of uh, uh, planetary motion and you know how you calculate the true positions from the mean positions, this terminology may seem familiar. So that's what gave us a clue. Then we realized that uh, the author has brilliantly thought of an epicycle model for determining the radius of the diurnal circle and also for determining the Pranakalantara. So we will show it here. So for example, this is the epicycle model. In this particular model, uh, there is a, the different circle as radius r, the outside circle. And this line is what gives the radius of the diurnal circle. And this dotted line traces the path of the radius of the diurnal circle. Uh, I have just blown up the necessary, this quadrant for uh, better understanding of what's going on. It's not to scale. So consider a circle of radius r and consider an epicycle of radius equal to antiphala. This is what the author has done. Antiphala is the quantity we have seen in the previous verse. And then in this case, and this angle is lambda, which is the longitude. Then we can show that this line OP is equal to the radius of the diurnal circle in this manner. It's fairly straightforward. I already said that the Bhujafala and Kotifala are the sides of a triangle having the hypotenuse as Antifala. That triangle here is P0, PQ. P0, P is Antifala. So uh, one side, uh, so this, uh, so if this angle is lambda, this will be basically 90 minus lambda. So this P0, Q is sin lambda, sin lambda times Antifala, which makes it equivalent to Bhujafala. And PQ is cos lambda times Antifala, which is Kotifala. Uh, so if you can now consider the triangle OPQ, which is a right angle triangle, uh, OQ is basically R minus Bhujafala and PQ is Kotifala. So R minus Bhujafala square plus Kotifala square gives you R cos delta. That is the, that is the, uh, you know, expression, which, that's how it's been derived. It's, it's quite amazing uh, to, this is purely, he is already, you know, there have been, he has already described various ways of determining the diurnal circle as well as, sorry, the radius of the diurnal circle as well as the Pranakalantara, but this clearly shows some sort of, you know, joy for coming up with new techniques for determining the same quantity in different ways. And this is a very imaginative way of doing it. And for example, and he doesn't end this here, in the very next verse, he, he does this in another way. Uh, he again defines two quantities called Bhujafala and Kotifala. Here, uh, here we see that the term Antifala is missing, but what we have instead is this common expression cos lambda versa and epsilon. So if you recall what was Antifala previously, Antifala was sin lambda versa and epsilon. So in some sense, he is using a different kind of Antifala, which is cos lambda versa and epsilon. And then you see the same thing, one is multiplied by sin lambda and one is multiplied by cos lambda. Okay, so he's again thinking of a triangle where the hypotenuse is cos lambda versus an epsilon and the sides are bhujafala and kotifala. And he again gives two expressions for the radius of the diurnal circle and kalasubheda is again the same thing as pranakalantra, we will see. Uh, so in this case now, in the previous case we saw that uh, the radius, the radius of the diurnal circle was on the inside. Now it is mapped to the outside, okay? Uh, and the other difference is the different circle in the previous case had a radius of r, whereas now it is taken as r cos epsilon. So again, I have blown up this quadrant for understanding what's happening. So here you have the radius as r cos epsilon. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, this is the this is the smallest radius of the diurnal circle possible. So basically when this circle, when this epicycle comes to this point, it reduces to a point. It reduces to a, a single point. And R is the maximum value of the, so this, this, this value, uh, 
uh, when you combine o, o y is equal to r, and that will be the maximum value of the radius of the diagonal circle. So here again, the way we consider is p naught p is the new new antefala, which is cos lambda over sine epsilon. So p q and p naught q. So now if you take this as 90 minus lambda, this angle will be lambda. So p q will be sin lambda times antefala, and this will be cos lambda times antefala. So sin lambda times this and cos lambda times this. And now you can see that the radius of the diagonal circle OP, if we consider the triangle OPQ is nothing but OP naught plus PQ, OQ is, so OQ is basically R cos epsilon plus cotifala. So R cos epsilon plus cotifala square plus bhujafala square gives you the radius of the diagonal circle again. So this is uh, quite amazing. Uh, it shows the various ways the author has thought about the same problem and he has come up with multiple approaches, multiple innovative and very different approaches. Completely sort of, uh, one uses the epicycle model, one uses uh, very, uh, you know, uh, involved planar geometry and a couple of simple methods as well. So this is the beauty of this text. Uh, uh, this, is a te this is something which the author continues in the other parts of the text too. For example, the lagna, there are multiple techniques which he uses to determine the lagna. And uh, uh, so, how much time do I have? Okay. So, uh, having discussed all this, uh, he also discusses how to determine the sign. So, uh, I will basically explain how the sign is determined of the plan pranakalantra. Uh, previously, we have said that you know, depending on the quadrant, the sign varies. So basically, he says that pranakalantra has to be applied positively or negatively. Okay, sorry. Let me just show you the verse. Uh, here, he basically restates some of the earlier formulae in a different way. But what we are interested here in is this last line. The pranakalantra is positive or negative depending on even and odd quadrants respectively. And we will see why this is. So you will see here that uh, this is lambda, this is alpha, okay, uh, and uh, in this is this is the first quadrant because uh, uh, you know if we uh, this is the first quadrant where the ecliptic is to the north of the uh, and uh, uh, if we consider the line PB and if we consider all possible great circle arcs which can be drawn from gamma to pb gamma b will be the shortest because p is the pole of gamma b uh, k is the pole of gamma s so gamma b will be shorter than gamma s and uh, that means that lambda is greater than alpha in the first quadrant and the same thing happens in the third quadrant and the reverse happens in the second and fourth quadrants so the pranakalantra will be positive or negative depending on first and third and second and fourth quadrants. So this is what he states in that verse. So this again shows, you know, fair amount of comfort with the, the celestial sphere and spherical trigonometry. And uh, so, so I'll just now come to my observations. Uh, so the variety of approaches given to the problem, to a given problem showcases both love for the topic and mathematical rigor. We've been talking about, even the movie, you know, some, there has been some criticism of lack of mathematical rigor. So hopefully this text is sort of a counterpoint uh, because uh, this clearly shows that, you know, the author was interested in arriving at the same result using different techniques. Uh, this ability to recast the problem, what, could have been imagined only as a problem of spherical trigonometry or at best planar trigonometry has been completely reimagined as an epicycle model. This shows, I don't know, incredible imagination. I mean, uh, uh, if you have already got the result, why, you know, sort of do something uh, and the, he, it's, it's been amazingly put in the epicycle model in my, uh, it's a sort of, uh, you know, uh, it's a genius in my opinion. Uh, also, the spherical trigonometry results which have been derived using planar triangles 
this requires again really good 3D imaginations, good strong spatial skills. This Madhva has a very important nickname, sort of uh, the the uh, sort of reverential title with which he is referred to, which is Golavid, literally knower of the sphere. And so I think this small example surely to some extent justifies that uh, that title of Golavid, the knower of the sphere, because of this different kinds of you know approaches and complete mastery over, over the spherical trigonometry, the celestial sphere. And this only underscores the pressing need to study Madhava's works. I'm sad to say that Madhava has been very poorly studied. Uh, he's been studied to some extent, but mostly in terms of uh, uh, what his students say about him. So I think uh, this underscores the pressing need to further study the works of Madhava. In fact, on the very first day we had uh, a person, uh, you know, comparing Aryabhata and Madhava. So, I mean, given the extent to which Aryabhata has been studied, I think it is really required to study Madhava more. <laughs> so, if you have any questions, I will welcome them. <laughs>